for news that's short, sharp and shrewd. Are you talking about the podcast or me? <laughs> Both. Backhanded compliment. This is Up Late with Ben Harvey. You've copped some abuse in your career. What did you make of Luke Beveridge? Well, I don't have any sympathy for reporters and certainly not sports journalists. But the Western Bulldogs coach has clearly flipped his lid. You've got the nerve to ask me a question and even be here. Beveridge is talking to Fox Sports reporter Tom Morris. He's pissed off with Tom for breaking some news about player selections at the Dogs. That scoop came after Morris broke the news that Ryan Gardner wouldn't play in last year's grand final. According to Beveridge, Morris's habit of breaking news ahead of schedule was dirty pool. You've been preying on us the last two times. You barracked for Melbourne, Tom Morris. Been preying on us. You've been opening us up, causing turmoil within our football club by declaring our team um, well before it needs to be declared. That's like a politician complaining that a journo's found out about a government announcement ahead of time. It's considered leakage. I think the leakage is your credibility, Luke. Not the first footy coach to chuck a tanty. They're highly strung people, and Beveridge isn't the first coach to get the shits with the journo. You're right. Yeah. What's your name? Mine. Yeah. Shane. Shane who? McGinnis. Okay, that's the best question you can come up with after two hours of footy. You're quite brilliant, Shane. Yeah. Any regrets at all about uh, what oh, happened? I'm sorry, do I do you need to get a confession or something? Last question. Uh, or I murdered someone? No, not at all. No, I'm just saying. Thank you. Thank you. No, no. Thanks, Tony. No, no, no. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, mate. Give me a straight. It's part of the game. Is that the gutter journalist you want to be? Your gutter journalism at the moment is killing our, us and beyond the scenes. Plenty of stuff on Fox that's gutter journalism. This was just journalism. Muckraking trash. In this instance, the muckraking trash being the truth. Morris was right. If the coach is having this kind of a meltdown about a story that's correct... And it's only round one. You need to calm down. How's he going to be at the end of the home and away season? You are tearing me apart, Lisa! The excruciating four-minute press conference ended with Beveridge trying to kick Morris out of the room. Yeah, next question. Mate, you're not welcome. And when he refused... No, 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 this is the AFL's press conference and I'll sit what? here. It's the what, AFL's sorry? press conference. The coach started putting random words together about how hard life was. Right where we're trying to stabilise our competition and what we do with everything that's gone behind the scenes and us you know, as coaches and a football program um, with this, the soft cap situation as it is... He then drilled home the fact that he considered Morris an embarrassment, not once. Yeah, you're an embarrassment to what you do, mate. Not twice. You're an embarrassment. But thrice. An absolute embarrassment. <laughs> disagree. And then leaving the room in quite the storm off. Mm, good sport. What happens now? Well, the AFL knows the best defence is a good offence, and it didn't take long for some mud to be thrown at Morris on Twitter. One match into season 2022, and we've already got one man stood down and another forced to apologise. I want to apologise for my behaviour. I want to apologise to Tom Morris and all those present last night. Would we expect anything less from the AFL? <laughs> well, the press conference with the Prime Minister and the Premier was much more civilised. Civilised? That was bordering on gay porn. There's been no state government in the country where we've had a more productive partnership. You expect a polite reach around at these media events, but Morrison looked like he was about to spray McGowan with baby oil and go full body on body. Great to be here with Premier McGowan as well. Uh, together, Perth is a world-class city, and we greatly appreciate that support from the West Australian Premier and the West Australian Government. How'd Anthony Albanese be feeling now? Like any bloke would feel watching his partner flirt with another man. But I think you're absolutely delicious. And then take him to a public toilet. I'm standing right here. <laughs> A couple of weeks after the WA Premier was too busy to see Albo and actively cock-blocked him by hosting a rival press conference... Uh, obviously, I didn't, don't know when he's scheduling his media conferences. Mark McGowan's diary, amongst other things, were wide open for the Prime Minister, who was so keen to sing McGowan's praises, he barely had time to apply some lube. And, uh, so we are complete fellow travellers when it comes to ensuring we have those projects. So today is about our partnership. And I particularly want to thank the Premier um, for his work. Get a room. And uh, whether it's been working together through COVID, whether it's been working together through many infrastructure projects, working to... Working to ensure Anthony Albanese doesn't get the keys to the lodge. I can only disagree with the presumption of your question. It was very much an all-stars event. Premier, 
Prime Minister, Minister Assisting the Prime Minister, Federal Attorney General, State Housing Minister, State Transport Minister. But everyone knew who the real star of the show was. And I'll hand you over to the Premier. Great to see you, mate. Mark was in his element and was cracking some pretty good gags. Actually, they were on the lame side of ordinary, but Ben Morton and Michaelia Cash found them hysterical. Uh, can I uh, firstly say great to see you all again. Uh, it's great to experience some vitamin D uh, in my system. I can't help but feel partially responsible uh, for his absence uh, for the last uh, two, two, or three hundred, two or three hundred days. Um, the PM was on the banks of the Swan to talk about how he and Mark were going to build a bridge together. Connecting different parts of the city in a really exciting way. But he was inevitably asked about Labor's internal frictions. The Premier did not appear with Anthony Albanese when he was in Perth a couple of weeks ago, so you must be really chuffed that you're now appearing up publicly alongside him when he so obviously snubbed the AFLP leader earlier this month. Well, I'm, I'm sort of buying the Nora's mark, I think, to do any of that commentary. McGowan was asked the same question. And he sang from the same song sheet. I've just done a press conference with the Prime Minister. Everyone knows my view on those things. I'm not going to engage in some sort of political attacks today. It's not appropriate that I do that. But was adamant his appearance with the PM was just business. I'll repeat to you again. I will be supporting and working with Anthony Albanese and Federal Labor over the next few months and lead up to the March, sorry, through the May election. Albo, if you're this deep in the fourth quarter and the most popular Labor Premier in Australia has to tell people he supports you, you've got a bigger problem than the AFL. It might be a long, hard winter. I'm Ben Harvey. If you'd like to watch up late with me, Ben Harvey, search for The West Australian on YouTube.